My name is Leonie Castellino. I am a textile artist, a contemporary Bujagi fiber artist. Today, I will introduce you two to the embroidered clothing of the nomadic tribes from the states of Rajasthan and Gujarat in Western India, as well as to Kanta cloth from Gujarat and Kanta from the state of Bengal from Eastern India. Motanai, Motanai. This concept is best expressed in the Japanese culture. Don't waste, don't waste. It's Motanai to throw it away. It can still be reused. It carries respect for all things large and small. The idea is to let things live out their full natural existence to the very last. So nothing is wasted. Let's travel to India and locate the states of Rajasthan and Gujarat. Rajasthan and Western Gujarat have a desert environment. They are home to hundreds of nomadic tribes that inhabit these lands. To appreciate the patchwork of the nomadic embroideries, let's take a peek at their life and clothing. The camel is transport. Her husband holds a camel's reins while his wife sits atop an embroidered camel cloth, ready to depart. Life is harsh in this arid brown landscape, but their clothing is alive with color. All their clothing is embroidered. See the embroidery on the vest and sleeves of these boys. There are quite a few borders on the colorful vest on the boy to the left. The blouse of this woman is heavily embroidered. It is festive wedding attire. It is alive with color and pattern and embellished with mirrors. Their identity, migration, folk art, culture and history is recorded in their clothing and jewelry. A wrap skirt, probably intended for a man to wear over breeches. It is simple and dramatic. Three bands of color separated by small white borders with scalloped edges on the top. The waistband is ablaze with color and pattern. Now see the detail in the embroidery and pattern on the wrap skirt. The stitches are rather crude, but the effect is dramatic. The beauty and vitality is in the imperfections of the embroidery. There are motifs and patterns. Most embroideries are symbolic and narrative. These patterns are for borders, with or without mirrors. They have shapes and names. See the top left panel, cradle and coins. Now look at the right panel, fourth down. We have just seen this border with the U-shaped design or scallops on the top and this was in the man's black and red skirt. A beautiful blouse in mirror work. This embroidery was for a wedding. The border patterns that we just looked at are here in all their glory to enhance the mirror work on this blouse. See the round and triangular patterns in this mirror work embroidery. In this image, you see another example. Mirror work is predominantly from this area. Just look at the beauty. The same border patterns are used for mirror work. However, the mirrors are placed further apart. The size of the stitches are changed and contrasting color is used. It makes this so lively. Now there is always need for new embroidery for ceremonies or a relative's dowry or to replace worn out clothes for festivals. Wives come from outside the husband's village. So embroidering together is a community activity to welcome these women and to share news and offer mutual support. This is the first cotton bedspread that we saw earlier. Now we can appreciate the beauty and understand what we are seeing. Now, what makes this so special? We know that every patch is preserved 
from clothing that was made with painstaking care for a family member in a particular tribe. The colors are just glorious. There's a sense of joyfulness, vitality and exuberance in the earth colors, which are punctuated by the pinks. There is a signature in this distinctive embroidery, which is colorful, organic and primitive. We can see it that it is from a particular tribe. To appreciate this patchwork, let's look and interpret patterns. There are symbols of everyday life. The triangular motif on the left represents a temple, indicating the importance of their Hindu faith in their culture. See the embroidery on the right, the embroidered temple. You see the triangle motif again, repeated in this bedspread. Now this patchwork bedspread is rare. It is gold work, patches from festive garments embroidered with gold thread. The patterns are so numerous and so fascinating. Gujarat is considered the world's richest source of folk embroidery. Think of these embroideries as drawing intricate patterns with metallic fine cord. Each gold cord is laid down and attached with red thread. The red makes the gold shimmer. The embroidery that you see here is more refined as it was made for weddings. There's more symmetry in the patchwork and each is banded with a heavy skein of cotton thread, which secures it to the base. These embroidered remnants are precious beyond comprehension. With increased education for girls, an upheaval in the caste system, and modernization, centuries of traditions of embroideries are slowly dying. Tradition, folk art, and remembered history will soon be lost as education changes the lives of women. These were lovingly created textiles that were reused several times. Thus far, we have seen history, migration and identity in pattern, embroidery and color, in the patchwork of the embroidered clothing of these nomadic peoples of the desert. Let's leave the nomadic tribes to discover Kanta cloth from Gujarat. The state of Gujarat is north of Mumbai and south of Rajasthan. In America, Kanta cloth is gaining in popularity. Designers have discovered it for home decor and clothing. In the rural villages, old, worn and frayed saris and shawls are reused to make light quilts, curtains, and bed covers. Saris, related in color, are cut apart, joined, layered over each other, and sewn together with a running stitch, the kanta stitch. This simple stitch is functional and can be decorative. Just a change in color and direction in the running stitch adds interest and dimension. When it is sewn over multiple layers of cloth, it provides texture to the fabric. This look identifies it as Kanta cloth. These colors and prints are typically from Gujarat. Printed saris are cut apart and rearranged with borders inserted for interest. The saris used a very fine cotton material and a beautiful light green print lines the reverse. Large running stitches sandwich the layers. There's a wonderful intuitive sense of color and design. This third example is a detail of a blue and white quilt. I selected this to show the printed patterns are similar to the bag on the right. My friend bought the bedspread online in America in 2020, while I bought the yoga bag in Mumbai several years ago. Designs and colors are traditional from Gujarat, ethnic identity. A fourth example, a Kanta silk wrap, front and back. On the left, the border of the sari is used as a central band on the front. On the right, the rather plain fabric on the back of the wrap 
is made interesting and attractive with bands of running stitch in lavender. The contrasting lavender color banded together in running stitch creates stripes. Observe the beauty in the imperfect. Nala is my friend, an artist who loves Kanta cloth and buys it directly online from India. She uses it to cover her couches, bed, cushions, and pillows. Here her bedspread has a lively large print with large running stitches and in bands of stripes. Pillows pick up accent colors. I borrowed remnants from two kanthas and a pillow from her to demonstrate the beauty of the mix. Kantha cloth is made up of layers of different fabrics, hence it is reversible. With more remnants, just a simple band is added to this plain pillow. By now, visually, you have a sense of kantha cloth as well as an awareness of color and pattern from Gujarat. I'm sure you have observed that nature is reflected in the prints. I draped the front and back of her scarf for pillows. The beauty is that the life of the material has been extended from the poor villages in tribal and rural India, repurposed several times and revived in foreign lands the spirit of Motainai. Let's travel across India, from the state of Gujarat in the west to the state of Bengal in the east. Bengal borders Bangladesh. However, the word kanta can also refer to embroidered folk quilts from the state of Bengal in eastern India. I would like you to be aware of the difference between kanta cloth and kanta embroidery. Kantas from Bengal are an ancient folk tradition with records, village life and events within their embroidery. The stitch used is a running stitch. This particular kanta records the stories of life in the villages. You can see homes, there's nature, animals, plants, dancing women, and men hunting. This kanta is a few hundred years old. It's a detail from a larger quilt. The Europeans have arrived in Bengal. The tiger is the trophy. The European man has a sword, and the tiger with the bloody face has a tear. A final example of contemporary kanta embroidery on a shawl from Bengal. It is embroidered only with running stitch. So be aware of the richness of this word, kanta. Inspired by this patchwork, I have the beginning of a contemporary interpretation from remnants. I am just experimenting with attaching raw edges with a running stitch. If I had doubled the gray fabric as a base, it would have had more texture and more interest. If I banded the patches with crib, it would look different. These are remnants with raw edges I pieced with poly organza on net. There's no running stitch. There's, there is no texture. Here is a cuff on a heavy coat. I think it would look more interesting with a border at the bottom. On the right, the polyorganza patchwork is on a lightweight vest. Perhaps I will do a running stitch in a contrasting color for the kanta look. Now this is not the end. It is just the beginning of creativity to experiment add, layer, develop texture, embellish, embroider, and to imbue it with personality. The beauty is in the development of design, reusing the old in creating something new. I do hope you are inspired with the embroidery 
and patchwork of the nomadic tribes of Rajasthan and Kanta cloth of Gujarat. Thank you.